Asia has become the new Mecca for mountain hunters. Pakistan alone has five varieties of sheep and two varieties of ibex, but Pakistan also has the largest population of markhor, the least known and most legendary of the world's wild goats, a twist-horned wonder that's found in some of Asia's steepest, roughest, and most remote mountains. Today, join us in a search for the legendary markhor as we open the pages of Trijikon's World of Sports Afield. Trijicon's World of Sports Afield is presented by Trijicon, Brilliant Aiming Solutions, DSC, the Dallas Safari Club, Ruger Firearms, Hornady Manufacturing, Accurate, Deadly, Dependable, The Wildlife Gallery Custom Taxidermy Studio, Zeiss Sport Optics, Boyd Harness Company, Cannon Safes, Nothing Protects Like a Cannon, the Wild Sheep Foundation, and Leishamo, the best boots money can buy. Our arrival in Islamabad was, was really smooth as silk. Uh, Farhad, who represents Shikar Safaris here in Pakistan, was uh, right on hand to meet us, and uh, we got our bags, everything came in. Thanks to Farhad's help, the gun clearance was absolutely not a problem, and uh, in a very short time, we were on our way. Uh, we're at the Karachi Airport in southwestern Pakistan, and as you can see, the American influence is everywhere. That's the biggest McDonald's in the whole world, right across the street from the airport. After multiple flights and seemingly endless hours traversing torturous mountain roads, we approached the mountains that were home to the Uriel and Markhor. I've hunted virtually all the world's big game destinations and learned years ago that simply reaching the hunting grounds in third world countries is often more difficult and time consuming than the actual hunt. Well, this is the, uh, the Torgat Markhor area and uh, we're looking at it all around. Sometimes they walk from camp. Uh, they say they've got uh, a really nice one spotted and we'll go look for him. But I think first we're going to check the rifle. Boy, this is a shot that I want to make sure I get as good as I've ever made a shot in my life. All right, well, we're all set. We got the rifle all wrapped up against the cold, just like me. And it is cold this morning. This is a, a big change from where we just came from down in uh, Baluchistan but uh, it'd be a good day to be in the mountains. The mountains of eastern Pakistan are among the most treacherous on earth. Both the Uriel and Markhor find sanctuary in the vertical terrain that will test both your legs and courage on the daily climb into their mountain stronghold. Here a misstep could truly be your last. Although you'll spend most of your climb carefully placing your boots on solid footing as you cling to a rock wall, you must also be aware of falling rocks from above, another hazard of mountain hunting. Once an area offering a good view of the country is reached, out come the optics. A quality pair of binoculars like my Zeiss combined with a spotting scope to make final evaluation of trophy quality at long range are vital to the success of this hunt. In country like this, you want to let your eyes do most of the walking. 
Craig's boots are pointed uphill when Trijicon's world of sports afield returns. We should take him. I think we should take him. All right, let's do it. It's 309, ready? Okay. Guys, we had a long day on the mountain. Yes. And uh, at the last minute, things kind of turned around a little bit. We were really looking for Markor, but uh, I wanted an Afghan Uriel real bad. And uh, this was too good an opportunity to pass, just with an hour of daylight left. And so we we took him. And well, I think he's a beautiful ram. He's he's, he's got to, he's got a good wide spread and uh, beautiful cape and. Uh, a great day on the mountain. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sir, good job. Craig Boddington's quest for Markor in the rugged mountains of Pakistan begins when Trigicon's world of sports afield returns. Well, got uh, day two for the Markor. We kind of left one last night up on a ridge that looks like he's worth another look. So maybe he stayed there the night, maybe not. but. Uh, Got another beautiful clear day and it's time to go. Well, this isolated farmhouse is at the absolute end of the road and not much of a road at that. <clears throat> but we've uh, already got some markhor spotted from right here, so that's a, a good omen. It looks like a group of females and maybe the same female we saw yesterday. We've got markhor here and that's a good sign. Making a pretty rough climb right now, but they've they've spotted a group of markhor up over this ridge, and uh, so we're going to try to get up into that saddle up above us. That's a bit of a climb, and uh, by the way, I'm scared to death of heights. But <laughs> if there's a markhor at the top, I can get there. We'd made one of the steepest ascents I've made in years. 
The last part, often the worst, was easy because there was something beyond the saddle we needed to see. Some of the guides had pushed ahead. I could tell they were excited. See the white one. Let me put the spot scope on. Yeah, let's take a look at him. You know, they're bedded. We've got lots of time. We should really look at them all and make sure we're right. The bedded, the the white one that's bedded down. By yes. The tree. Yeah, he's a really nice one. Come take Let me take, take a look. look. One of the most important shots of Craig Boddington's hunting career is moments away, when Trijikon's world of sports afield returns. And now, Inside the Hunt, brought to you by Hornady. On this week's Inside the Hunt, let's talk about matching the bullet to the game. You know, we spend an awful lot of time around the campfire arguing the merits of one cartridge versus another, but the truth is, it's always the bullet that does the work, and you've got to make sure that you choose your bullet with the, the game and the distance and the conditions you're going to be hunting under. I actually brought two different Hornady bullets on, on this hunt. Uh, one of the animals we were going to hunt was a big, robust animal, and so I brought 180 grain Hornady interlocks for my 300 Weatherby. But then when we switched to the mountains, I actually brought uh, 150 grain Hornady interbond. You know, this is a, a little faster load. It, uh, it shoots very flat shoots very well in my rifle and so that was my choice you know there's many great choices out there but you really want to think hard now if if you're going to bring two bullets you better think about that really hard the reason i did that on this hunt is i knew that i'd be moving around and i'd have a chance to recite the rifle before moving from one area to another so using two different bullets for two different classes of game worked very well in that situation but if you have a wide range of game in any one area then you better have a bullet that's heavy enough to do the job and going to penetrate deeply enough on the largest game you're going to hunt. And if that had been the situation, I would have gone with the 180 grains across the board. But now I'm recited and I'm going to use these fast 150 grain inner bonds and I think they'll do the job just fine. This segment is brought to you by Cannon Safes. Nothing protects like a cannon. got uh, a, a whole bunch of mark or bedded on the on the far slope there's several males we haven't seen these before and the one big one we definitely haven't seen before yeah they're uh, about uh, 385 yards that's that's not an easy shot but we don't have much wind and uh, they're good and stationary so I think we should probably probably take that shot so we're gonna go ahead and get ready and I'm gonna study it for a little while but uh, I think we'll probably take the shot from here. Hey, Sarp, what distance do you have? 380, Craig. Okay. Less uh, about 4%. Yeah. Uh, that's about 360. 360 exactly. Okay. I should drop about about eight inches at that distance. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's going down. He's going down towards those rocks. He's he's below this boulder for me now. I can't see him.
Sir, I've, I've got him. What's that distance? 278. Okay. He's in my scope. Right now, right? now he's way downhill. It's got to be somewhat less than that for the shot. Go for two Probably 250. Yeah. Should be dead on. Mm -hmm. Bad angle. I need him to move his head. Wait for a while. Okay. Okay, yeah, I've got his shoulder open. Okay. Whenever okay, I'm going to take the shot now. He's down. He's down. All right. <laughs> oh, man. I'm really happy for you. You put tears in my eyes. I'm really happy. <laughs> Mine too. Mine too. That's a that's a dream come true. Wow. Wow. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. A, a terrible climb and uh, and I honestly didn't know until we were most of the way up that they'd actually spotted something I was just climbing and <laughs> doing the best I could uh, and uh, so we came up over a rock and there was a whole bunch of them and this is clearly the the best one this is the one they're looking for the uh, Suleiman Markor is, is the smallest of the Markor but it's it's really the most beautiful it's the one that has these incredibly twisted horns and, and you look for one that has at least four turns, but you also want want space between the turns. And Sarp, when you saw this one, you knew he was the right one. Yeah, exactly. He yeah, was, that space between the edges, you know, for sure, it was the biggest one in the bunch. Well, he's he's a magnificent animal, he's and, and nice one. truly, this is a, an animal I, I never dreamed of being able to hunt. And uh, I just I can't thank you enough. You are welcome. And your people did a wonderful job, Sarp. Well done. I'm very and, happy it happened to you, Craig. Oh, I I'm. Very, very happy, and, and thanks to you guys at, at Shikar Safaris for making it happen. My pleasure. It's fantastic. Now, we really ought to get the whole crew in here and, and, and show what kind of a team it takes to, to do this kind of a mountain hunt. You know, on a, on a mountain hunt like this, uh, I'm really just the trigger man, and I'm not nearly as capable as, as these great mountaineers. Uh, they're the guys that, uh, that do the real work, and, and they knew that this, this big, old Markor was somewhere on this side of the mountain and it took uh, took a little time but they found him and we got in on him and uh, it was uh, not an easy shot but not bad as, as Markor goes. This is one of the tough ones, one of the, the great mountain hunts of the world and uh, without great people like this it would never happen. It had been a great hunt. The Afghan Uriel was a trophy I'd long wanted, but I honestly never dreamed that I might someday take a Markor. I will treasure the memory of my time in Torgar for the rest of my life, and I'll always be grateful to the Shikhar Safari team for making it happen. This was my second trip to Pakistan. It's true that this country has problems, and only a fool would say that the border areas are completely safe. But I can honestly say that I've never felt threatened in that country. In hunting distant lands, you meet people of many different cultures, but on the mountain, we share a common bond as hunters. Trigicon's World of Sports of Field has been brought to you by Trigicon, Brilliant Aiming Solutions, DSC, the Dallas Safari Club, Ruger Firearms, Hornady Manufacturing, Accurate, Deadly, Dependable, The Wildlife Gallery Custom Taxidermy Studio, Zeiss Sport Optics, Boyd Harness Company, Cannon Safes, Nothing Protects Like a Cannon, the Wild Sheep Foundation, and Glacier Mode, the best boots money can buy. Closed captioning provided by Getting Involved, a guide to hunting and conservation for kids.